الله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وبه نستعين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله we are reciting today from Surah Al An'am, verses 138 to 142. It's on page number 146. Surah Al An'am, verses 138 to 142, on page number 146. <coughs> بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وقالوا هذه أنعام وعرث حجر لا يطعمها إلا من نشاء بزعمهم وأنعام حرمة ظهورها وأنعام لا يذكرون اسم الله عليها وأنعام لا يذكرون اسم الله عليها افتراء سيجزيهم بما كانوا يفترون وقالوا ما في بطون هذه الأنعام خالصة لذكورنا ومحرم على أزواجنا وإن يكن ميتة فهم فيه شركاء سيجزيهم وصفهم إنه حكيم عليم قد خسر الذين قتلوا أولادهم سفها بغير علم وحرموا ما رزقهم الله افتراء على الله قد ضلوا وما كانوا مهتدين وهو الذي أنشأ جنات معروشات وغير معروشات والنخل والزرع مختلفا أكله والزيتون ورمان متشابها وغير متشابه كلوا من ثمره إذا أثمر وآتوا حقه يوم حصاده ولا تسرفوا إنه لا يحب المسرفين ومن الأنعام حمولة وفرشا كلوا مما رزقكم الله ولا تتبعوا خطوات الشيطان إنه لكم عدو مبين صدق الله العلي والعظيم When Avicenna wanted to argue that we need a divine law, he said that human beings are social creatures, meaning that a human being cannot live by himself. And so he lives in a collective and a community. When he lives in a community, there are differences of opinion, there are different ambitions, there are different desires, and there's also limited resources limited land, money, property, food. And therefore, there's always going to be conflict amongst people. And therefore, in order to avoid that conflict, what we need is law. But human beings make their laws based on their own desires and their own ambitions. And human beings don't understand the entire social, political context in which the law is being made. So he said, therefore, we need Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to reveal these laws for us. These verses of the Qur'an are demonstrating that the ahkam of Islam have been revealed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are not based in superstition. They are not based in ambition or desire. They are not based in mythology or in tradition. The way they were during the time of Jahiliyyah. In the time of Jahiliyyah, they had made a number of things haram upon themselves. 
things which are halal to consume, there is nothing wrong with eating them, they made it haram upon themselves. And they made it haram either because of superstition or they made it haram because of prejudice. Let's look at some examples now. It says, وَقَالُوا هَذِهِ أَنْعَامٌ وَحَرْثٌ حِجْرٌ لَا يَطْعَمُهَا إِلَّا مَنْ نَشَاءُ بِزَعْمِهِمْ That certain animals which they would set aside and they would say that these animals, nobody is allowed to eat them. Okay. Except for the people whom we want, they can eat them. In other words, it's for those people who are working to take care of the idols. They made up this ruling so that there would be a few camels or cattle or goat or sheep that nobody could touch. And if somebody wanted to touch them, they'd say, Astaghfirullah, this is not meant for anybody to touch. Okay? And then there were some animals which were good for riding, like horses and camels. They would say, no, no, no. These animals have been made haram. They would pick them and say, these animals have been made haram for what? For riding. You're not allowed to ride them. And then there were certain animals that would say, no, these animals, if you want to slaughter them, you can't slaughter them with the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You have to slaughter them in the name of your idols. And then somebody would ask them, like, where are you getting these laws from? They make absolutely no sense. If they are they would say, no, no, this has been revealed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This has been sent to us by God through our traditions. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that they shall be punished for what they have ascribed to God. Then it continues with the list. If they say, now this particular animal that is pregnant with a baby in its belly, when that baby is born, only the men can eat it. The women can't eat it. In other words, the women can cook it. When they're done cooking it, the men are going to eat it. But with one exception, we're going to be fair to them. If the animal is born dead and not alive, then the women can eat it as well. Okay? And because once the animal is dead, they didn't want it themselves. They didn't desire it. So what did they do with it? They said, okay, we'll give it to the ladies. Let them have it. Okay? They made up these laws. If it was dead, then they could both have it. سَيَجْزِيهِمْ وَصْفَهُمْ إِنَّهُ حَكِيمٌ عَلِيمٌ God says the same things that you are ascribing, you'll be punished for it, and God is wise and all-knowing. Now, they used to do these things, make things haram, because they thought they were achieving something. And sometimes they'll become even proud that we follow these rituals. And they thought by following these rituals, which were senseless rituals, which had no basis to it, they thought we're going to be successful in some way. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قَدْ خَسِرَ الَّذِينَ in fact, they are at a loss. Now here Allah introduces a new subject. قَدْ خَسِرَ الَّذِينَ قَتَلُوا أَوْلَادَهُمْ سَفَهًا بِغَيْرِ عِلْمٍ Those who kill their children without knowledge, thinking that they are protecting their dignity and their honor in society, actually they are at a loss. There are two things they used to do at that time. One is that they used to bury their daughters alive. And sometimes they would sacrifice even their sons for their idols. And by doing that, they felt that they were protecting their dignity and protecting their rituals and this sacrifice was going to protect them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, no, you are at a loss. وَحَرَّمُوا مَا رَزَقَهُمُ اللَّهُ افْتِرَاءً عَلَى اللَّهُ And they also made haram those things which Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed for them to consume and has revealed and given to them for them to enjoy from it. And when they do that, they say Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us to do that. We see that today as well. People who use religion for their own ambitions, for their own goals. When you look at Daesh and ISIS today, they will go and kill people with whom they have a political disagreement. And then when they're asked, why did you do that? Well, they said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded us. The Qur'an tells us to do this. The Qur'an tells us these people are kafir and if they are kafir, then their blood is okay for us to spill and therefore we have gone and killed them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, They are led astray and they have not come to the right path. They have not been guided. Now here's the beauty of Islam. Not only have the laws been made by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but the laws have a reason. 
generally everything is halal, everything is permissible. If you don't know whether something is halal or haram to eat, initially speaking, okay? we're not talking about zabiha or non-zabiha. Okay? If you don't know whether it's zabiha or not, you have to be sure it is zabiha. Okay? But let's say, for example, there's new, a new item that's created. And you wonder now, is this halal to eat or not? We've never come across this before. It has never been mentioned before, for example. Can we consume it or not? The first general principle is going to be what? Yes, you can consume it. Unless there is a particular hadith that says that this type of food is haram to consume. Secondly, when something is made haram, it's not because of superstition. It's not because of mythology. It's not because, you know, of chance. It's because there is a reason behind it. Okay? So look at these verses now. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَهُوَ الَّذِي أَنْشَأَ جَنَّاتٍ مَعْوُشَاتٍ وَغَيْرَ مَعْوُشَاتٍ Like, why would God make things which are good for you, haram upon you? He created so many good things for you to consume. He's the one who created gardens of two types. You know, there are gardens which actually have a, they have to have a trellis. They have to have a wall. And the vines, they climb up the wall. Right? And then there are gardens where you don't have to have that. You have trees that are in the garden. Their trunks are enough to put the leaves up. Ma'awushatin, the ones that need a trellis. Wa ghayra ma'awushatin, the ones that don't need a trellis. Wa nakhla and date palms. Wa zara and farms. Mukhtalifa and ukulu, subhanallah. You know, just imagine if Allah just gave us one food to taste. And we didn't have different flavors. And we didn't enjoy the food that we ate. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, We not only gave you food, but we made it of different flavors. Wazaytuna wa rumana and olives and what's Roman? Pomegranate. Mutashabihan wa gayra mutashabih. Some of these fruits are similar to each other. For example, you look at an orange and a tangerine, very similar to each other. Wa gayra mutashabih. Some of them are so different from each other. They're different in taste, they're different in texture, they're different in color, they're different in their effects that they have upon you. Okay? There are some fruits that become available in the winter because our body needs them in the winter. And there are some fruits, for example, watermelon, becomes available in the summer. Why? Because it's hot and you need water and it cools us down. Right? So similar in those which are different. What does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ask? Which ones of these has Allah made haram upon you? Right? Allah says, "Kulu min thamarihi idha athmara." We want you to eat it, consume it, enjoy it. And what does Allah want in return? Very simple. Two things: wa'atu haqqahu yawma hasade. First, share it with others. You know, give some in charity the day you reap the fruits. That's one thing. And the second thing. And do not be extravagant in using it. Do not be wasteful in using it. Do not use it in the haram way because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not like those who use things in the haram way. And even amongst the animals that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you, there are animals for riding, animals for using, animals for consuming, animals for different reasons. Use them. There's no need to make one animal haram, one animal halal, if it is an animal that's good for your consumption. Consume the food that Allah has given you and do not follow the footsteps of shaitan. In other words, in our sharia, when something is made haram, it's because the intellect tells us that this is not good for us. Because there's an actual disadvantage to us. There's an actual harm to us. And if we want to make something haram, either there has to be a clear proof in the Qur'an, or a clear proof in a hadith which is sahih, or a clear rational argument for why it should be haram. Otherwise, we cannot make things haram that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made halal upon us. إِنَّهُ لَكُمْ عَدُوهُ مُبِينَ That is the work of shaitan and he is a clear enemy for you. صلى الله عليه وسلم محمد وآل محمد